somebody recommended that I watch a movie called The Stoning of Soraya M. Uh, I was familiar with it, but um, I had never watched it. I remember talking to somebody shortly after it came out, and he he told me about it. This was this was long before I ever really started looking into biblical law. But anyway, he it was just obviously violent, but he didn't really give any details other than that. And the movie, it's kind of a uh, just a, a bit of backstory. It was about a, a French reporter who was traveling in Iran and uh, heard a report about some lady who had just recently been executed. So they dramatized it. Um, he's he's in this place. Uh, he's in this small town in Iran. This this lady pulls him aside and needs to tell him something that happened here yesterday. And then the, basically the whole movie, the actual story of the movie is taking place in a flashback of her talking about it. So uh, he listens to her story. And then basically the movie is a, I guess, a political story or kind of an undercover telling of stuff that goes on in Iran. And in that sense, it's really good at uh, showcasing uh, women oppression and um, it's a very pro pro women pro women's rights not killing innocent people who don't deserve to die um, and so in that sense it does a really good job of shedding light on it um, but I think a lot of people would also it would be probably the 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 first thing that they would think of or point to if you ever start talking about public stoning as a means of execution and um, in that sense, it's it's the worst job ever. It's just the most pathetic arguments against stoning as a means of execution um, for a few reasons. So obviously the whole charge against her um, committing adultery against her husband is just completely false. And uh, even if we're not, I mean, the movie gives details and stuff, which a judge wouldn't necessarily be privy to when this actually all comes out in court. Um, but even let's just assume that this is just the way that it comes out in court. There's a guy, there's two guys that can, that accuse a lady of, um, committing adultery. And let's see the, one of the requirements for stoning is that the witnesses are supposed to cast the first stones. Well, the one, one of the guys, uh, just flat out refuses to, he's handed a stone and he literally just like drops it and walks away, which in, in God's law is a huge red flag. You're like, wait a minute, does this person have a guilty conscience? Does he want to retract his, I mean, it would basically be tantamount to saying I lied. Um, and in which case he would actually be put to death. But what's even crazier is that there's an allowance apparently in Sharia law where a woman alone can be guilty of adultery and not the man that she committed adultery with, which is completely absurd. In the Bible, it's actually the opposite way around. Um, then Deuteronomy 22 and Exodus 22 are kind of parallel passages. There's not quite parallel, but they overlap a little bit. Um, where it's possible that if there's a woman who's betrothed, I mean, like she hasn't even lain with her husband yet. It's literally just, they've, they've signed a, a marriage contract. Um, even at that point, if she were to sleep with somebody else, it would be adultery. Um, but the law says that if she cries out, then, uh, in other words, she's unwilling. Then the Bible says that it's uh, similar to a case where somebody rises up and strikes his neighbor. So she was unwilling, so she's not guilty in it. So the Bible actually provides for where there's uh, just a man guilty of adultery and not the woman because it was it was rape. So the the movie portrays it as they accuse her of um, committing adultery or seducing this man and the man just sort of went along with it. And so therefore he's not guilty because she initiated it, which is totally, totally perverse. Um, it's the other way around. It's like saying that women have all the power in seduction and men are never, uh, not men are never to blame, but men can sometimes not be to blame when no, it's, it's always, always the man. The, the Bible doesn't really speak of a man being, being raped by a woman or seduced by a woman where it's not his fault. It just doesn't ever refer to that 
existing. Um, so, uh, number one, he wouldn't cast the first stone showing that he has a guilty conscience. Number two, how would you get him in a, in a, in biblical law to even, um, how would you get him to say, yeah, uh, we slept together when it would be in biblical law, it would be his life on the line. He would basically be confessing to a capital offense and lying, lying about, uh, committing a capital offense, which is totally absurd. Well, and then number two, they, they really want to pull on some heartstrings where they basically bring her father in, um, as she's being executed and they, they get her father to cast the first stone, which you haven't seen him before in the movie, except maybe briefly. And it's like, where in the world is this coming from? And I think it's just trying to, to pull at heartstrings, which I don't necessarily fault, but then in terms of a, of a legal perspective, uh, the witnesses are supposed to cast the first stones and then they're bringing in just a family member of, of his. So he throws stones and he can't actually hit her. And they're like, oh, okay, well that, that actually, that doesn't work cause he's old. So then her husband who is responsible for bringing the false charges and threatening the other guy to, to force him to bear witness throws the first stones. And then instead of the other witnesses, th the other witness throwing next, they bring her two sons to come in and throw stones at her. So it's like, well, yeah, what they're just, it's just trying to throw, trying to pull heartstrings. Um, doesn't really work. And then, I mean, arguably, um, there's a reason why children would be, um, forced to, to put their parents to death. But I think something else biblically that would come into play, it says that anybody who strikes his father, or his mother should be put to death. So maybe they could do it, but then they would be put to death afterwards. Or I don't know. There's, there's, there is supposed to be a serious amount of weight to, um, children, striking their parents, much less putting them to death in an execution. Maybe that would be overridden, um, but it would be a very rare situation. And they just kind of like hand the eight and 10 or 12 year old sons stones and like, here you go, um, you know, have fun. And throughout the whole movie, the, the, the crowd is just portrayed as bloodthirsty, uh, which is exactly the opposite of what uh, the Bible says is supposed to be the effect and the purpose of public stoning, which is to make people afraid. It's supposed to make people afraid. It's, it's a, a grisly barbaric thing, um, that the person did in the case where a crime was actually committed worthy of, of stoning. Um, but this is just, it, it portrays the crowd as borderline giddy to put her to death. And, one of the things that the city official does announce to the crowd, he says, with every stone you throw, your honor, honor will return. And there's some biblical merit to that. Um, Paul says in the New Testament, he, he quotes um, all the, the passages about stoning, purge the evil from among you uh, so that all Israel may hear and fear and never do such wickedness as this again among you. So it's meant to be a deterrent. Uh, just putting the person to death secretly or quietly by lethal injection is, uh, too, too peaceful. And it withholds, um, a, an extremely valuable life-saving teaching tool, which is don't do what this person did to deserve the death penalty. Um, but then also one of the reasons that the entire public is supposed to do it, it's supposed to be a check on, uh, on a judge's authority, where if a judge makes a bad ruling, um, well, and then the Pharisees did this with Jesus. They, they said, well, we don't care about the penalty. Like we'll suffer. We'll take the consequences for killing Jesus. Well, I think the opposite would also be true of trying to save somebody. And this happened once with Jonathan. And, uh, when Saul made a rash vow that and nobody should eat until we win this battle. Well, the guys started getting so weak from not winning the battle, um, that they, they weren't or this, they started getting so weak from not eating that they, they were weak and his son, Saul's son, Jonathan didn't hear it and ate some honey. And everybody said, Oh, but your dad made a vow that anybody who eats should, or is supposed to die. 
Well, and Jonathan said, okay, well then I guess I need to die. And Saul was about to kill his son and the people sort of stepped in and they said, no, this basically, they said, this is ridiculous. Um, he didn't hear the vow. It wasn't uh, a failure on his part. And so we're not going to let you do this. So I would, I would say that the same thing is supposed to happen with, uh, an execution. If the public disagrees and says, no, this person is not supposed to be put to death. We think that this is wrong. This is a bad ruling. Then they're supposed to be able to stop it because they're the means of execution. It's not that the judge goes out and hires somebody who's the direct, who answers to the judge directly. Uh, it's supposed to be the entire public. And so if the public doesn't agree with public executions, then public executions can't happen because they are the means of it as well. Um, what else I got in my notes here? Oh yeah. There's a, when, when the guys are asked to, to say what happened, like, how did you commit adultery? Did, 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 was she in the room and then you went in or was she lying down? Um, they basically don't give any details whatsoever. The husband said, well, I saw them touch hands once. And then uh, apparently it's somehow sustained, even though nobody gives, asks any questions about details of what happened and no, get, but nobody gives any details either. Did they lie with each other? Yes or no. Nobody ever asked that question. Nobody ever answers that question. Oh, and then at the very end, the guy who had been threatened to, to provide testimony that he slept with her which number one, he wouldn't have done because it would have meant his death as well. Number two, they didn't uphold the fact that if somebody's found to be lying about a capital offense, it, like bringing a false charge of a capital offense and you're found out to be lying, you're put to death. Well, they don't have that in this community. So the guy after she's dead, the guy, n not her husband who, who threatened who threatened this other witness, but the guy who wouldn't cast a stone comes out and says, he like, yeah, it was all a lie. Uh, this person threatened me, made me do it. He just sort of like walks away and goes home. And the judge just sort of looks upset. And instead of this guy being put to death multiple times over number one for committing adultery with her, supposedly number two, uh, refusing to cast the first stone. And then number three, he, basically admits that he was lying the whole time. So that's like, that's death three times over. And he didn't really, it was, he was never at risk of losing his life for doing any one of those things. Um, um, Soraya's uh, husband, um, had threatened to reveal the criminal history of one judge. Um, and so this one judge, not the, not the guy who ultimately made the decision, um, uh, but he basically helped the, the sham trial because he was threatened with losing his status and being exposed. So now he knows that there's a false witness and he's looking for other people. And he basically goes out and helps him find another false witness. Um, in, in assisting that that's a capital offense too. So it's like everybody here was supposed to have died instead, um, before the stoning ever even took place. Uh, but then after it comes out, the town's just sort of like, Oh, Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, and the end movies over, um, Leviticus five, one talks about anybody who, who knows of, of, uh, an offense that has happened and, ref and does not come forward about it is guilty. Um, so yeah, now that the, at the end, the good judge knows that, Oh, all of this was a sham. Now he's a witness, but then he doesn't do anything about it. The movie's over. So it's like literally the judge. Uh, the other earlier corrupt judge, the, uh, the Soraya's husband, and then the other guy Soraya supposedly committed adultery with all four of those guys directly are, would be guilty of the death penalty. And then obviously, um, her Soraya's father as well, because he threw a stone at her, which was before the execution actually started because the witnesses have to start it. So basically he never actually hit her, but he threw some rocks at her. So I don't know. Um, he he's guilty as well, though, to a lesser extent it's, um, uh, in terms of argument against stoning as a means of execution, wouldn't you want to prevent, present a, like a good argument against it rather than, um, you know, pick any method of execution and say electric chair or just life in prison 
any of those things would be unjust because the she didn't do it and was vindicated and proved that she didn't do it just by the bad way that the proceedings were done multiple, multiple, multiple times over. Um, so that's just, it's a movie on what happens when a community completely forgets the law, or in this case, maybe never knew it in the first place. Um, though funnily enough, the lady that's relating all of this story to the French reporter uh, knows that it's wrong, even though the law says that they, the Sharia law says they did everything right. Um, so in that sense, it's an interesting way that people do have the law written on their hearts, the real law, God's law, and then they they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. They they know what the right thing is. They know the wrong what the wrong thing is when they see it. Yeah. Uh, so a few takeaways. Obviously, the the threatened witness, the guy who refused to cast the first stone, um, he felt that he was at risk because he had been threatened. But refusing to bear false witness would not have put him at any less risk because the justice system would have required that he be put to death anyway. So it's like, oh, you're threatening me. You're threatening to kill me. And if I agree with you, then I'll probably be killed. And if I don't agree to do this, then I'll probably be killed. In which case, if the risks are the same, why not do the right thing? B, it would make it difficult or impossible to get two false witnesses because uh, now they're risking their lives. In, in saying this, obviously her father would not have cast the first stone because he was not a witness. Um, arguably, her sons would not have cast stones at all. After it comes out that the charges are false, uh, her husband, the other false witness who wouldn't cast the stone, they also would have been stoned to death. I think after carrying that out or even after seeing her stoned to death, and the movie did go a little bit beyond with, with some of the gore. It didn't, it didn't focus on it but like it cuts away and then comes back and then it shows the blood strewn around her, which goes on for probably like seven, there's a seven foot wide pool of blood around her. Um, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I've never actually witnessed a stoning. Maybe it's totally accurate. Um, I do kind of doubt that, but it's supposed to make the community afraid, not be energized and like who's next. I think that is a very poor portrayal and, just makes no emotional sense whatsoever. Um, the only person who was kind of upset by it was the false witness, and he he refused to throw a stone at her, but then he left. So he didn't watch, and he wasn't as disturbed as he should have been for what he for what he did. He he was more of a coward, just trying to protect himself. So yeah, that's the stoning of Soraya M. In terms of women's rights and alerting alerting people to injustice committed in the far reaches of the world. Uh, it does a good job, but also if this is actually how the law is practiced, uh, number one, the law is wrong. Number two, it has nothing to do with biblical stoning. They ignore basically all the procedures in this movie. I'm not sure if it's indicative of the way things are actually done, but in terms of uh, a pop culture reference of what people would think of, it would be the closest connection that they have to thinking perhaps that they understand what the Bible is actually talking about. And if, if this was an accurate portrayal of uh, God's law and, and a biblical procedure for stoning, I would hate the law too. Um, it's a pretty twisted presentation. There's very little good in it worthwhile other than to see that, oh, maybe we need to be reaching out to people and show them what God's true law of liberty looks like. Anyway, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.